I also said that Governor Yusuf's name was not in the NMPP register submitted to INEC. The panel ordered INEC to withdraw the certificate of return it had presented to Yusuf and issue same to Gaona. Minutes after the court verdict, commercial activities were completely brought to a halt in Kano Metropolis as offices and businesses hurriedly shut down, with many rushing home, afraid that there might be violent reactions to the tribunal judgment, even as the state government imposed a 24-hour curfew that has since been lifted with normalcy restored. The governing M NMPP has rejected the court decision with Governor Yusuf, who remains in power pending the outcome of his appeal urging his supporters to remain peaceful. The APC has in the meantime welcomed the verdict with the national chairman of the party and former governor of Kano State, Abdullah Ganduje, sovereign the joy of victory. Now to help us understand the situation in Kano, we have joining us right now in the studio a senior advocate of Nigeria, uh, Sunusi Musa, who was one of the APC legal uh, counsel in Kano. He's a member of the APC legal team. Uh, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Yeah, and uh, we're also expecting to join us uh, virtually the secretary to the Kano state government, Dr. Abdullah Bafa Bichi. And when he does, we'll eventually have uh, both gentlemen. But let me start with you here, uh, Sanusi. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the things that the NMPP has been saying that, look, this judgment does not sit well with a lot of them because uh, the challenges with the ballot paper should have been blamed on INEC and not the NMPP. And of course, they say that it looks like the tribunal favored uh, the party uh, that's at the center at the federal level. And uh, it looks like federal might was used. What do you make of such kind of um, <laughs> rhetoric from um, NMPP? <laughs> it's just, uh, it's laughable, honestly. Um, in election petition, Apart from the allegation of um, qualification of a candidate, any other allegation is against INEC because it is INEC that conducts the election, not a political party. So the only allegation that will be against, uh, I, uh, against the party or the candidate is where, as we allege, that the, uh, Mr. Yusuf was not qualified to contest the election then maybe the second one is where you are basing your election petition on the issue of corrupt practices. That is also an allegation that goes to the issue of against the other party who must have won the election, maybe with INEC because they connive to, uh, perpetuate, the, uh, to perpetuate the corrupt practices. But where you are talking of substantial non-compliance, it is an allegation against INEC, complaint against INEC. And my lords in their judgment, they have clearly stated that, that this were grievous allegation against INEC, and INEC admitted some of them. But senior advocate, if INEC admitted, how come the invalid votes were mostly of the NMPP, and there were no invalid votes against that of the yes, APC. Yes, because, that is uh, because, because the submission. It is our allegation against them. And we sought for the order of the tribunal. We went round, brought out all those ballot papers that were stuffed, which neither had the stamp, signature, or date of the election, photocopied them, certified by INEC. So if NNPP think or allege that there are ballot papers that were also for the APC that were uh, unsigned and stamped and dated, they should have also gone to, 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 to get them from, from uh, um, ask, um, you should have asked for um, uh, inspection, brought out those, and also uh, present them before the court. But it's not for the court to go and start looking for evidence for you. It's what you present to the court that it will lose. And that was what we did. So if they have anything like that, because uh, to the best of my knowledge, all the APC's vote were valid, they were dated, signed, and stamped. And that was why we said this, there was no compliance in the regard to, to, with regard to these ballot papers. And they ought to be voided.
Now, let's talk about the issues of the counting, the recounts. Uh, did you actually have an MPP, uh, uh, lawyers, including party members, all throughout the uh, uh, recount of the votes, or they were absent? Because there's a mixed signal we're receiving that uh, uh, they say some of the NMPP leaders were present, but later on they were asked to go. Asked and them. then no, later no, on no, look, we no, heard no. that it's only the lawyers that were Nobody left. Later on them. we heard that even both were asked to go. It looks like the NMPP, it's the a, APC a used, used federal might it's a terrible to, lie. to, to, to uh, during the recount, actually. How can we do so? How can you use the federal money? The federal agencies how? are your control. The security no, no, agencies are in there. If, if we have the control of federal agencies, um, about f three, about four uh, um, 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 officials of the State Executive Council could have been in, in detention by now because they were those who chased the, the, the members of the tribunal out of Kano. Instill fear in all of us that if the judgment of the tribunal didn't go their way, they are going to they visit the, the, the people of Kano with, 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 with the violence. Yeah, I remember one of the commissioners uh, actually saying that. Including the secretary to the state government. He said it. I have the, I, I have the, 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 uh, the clips, the secretary to the state government, the special advisor political, the special advis advisor youth and sport, and as well as the commissioner of Orlando. Two of them were, were sacked. So, so if, if we have that, we could have arrested them. But the issue is that we have gone to court, the motions were granted, and if they refuse to come to witness the, the inspection of the document, is it our duty to force them to be there? It's not our duty. We, we asked, we, we, we seek for an order from the court, and the court gave us an order, and we went around to, to enforce that order. So it's for them, if they want to participate, to be there. After all, that order was not given behind, uh, in, 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 in the darkness. It is there. It is in the record of the court. So if they stayed away, so be it. And if, because they have seen that, if they want something, they could have asked for also for an order to inspect and sort out those that they think they are invalid for, for, for the APC. But they have not done that because they know there is nothing like that. All right, we would like to remind our viewers that uh, we extended an invitation to the Kano State Governor and, of course, uh, the Secretary to the State Government, uh, uh, Dr. Abdullahi Bafabichi, uh, was uh, asked to actually meet uh, with us and uh, be on the program. And he agreed to be on the program virtually from Kano. And, uh, we are yet to have him. We've been expecting him all through. And then, of course, there's been this strong uh, allegation you've laid here that you actually have him on tape saying that uh, threatening the judges and, and no, all of that. No, it has been reported in the media. It's yeah, I mean, we saw that, but you are saying that yes. here now. I know uh, one of the commissioners said the that, media. and then he had to face the road. But let's talk about the critical issues out of this judgment. One is that in the face of Nigerians, some people are beginning to question why the tribunal will deliver this judgment virtually. That is it, this is we didn't see that happening in other places. What exactly was the threat? Couldn't they have asked that the tribunal should move out of Kano and sit in other places, in other states like this? Why is the time? What, um, um, giving judgment via Zoom is not the first time. I Myself, I have had judgment delivered via Zoom by the Supreme Court in cases that I participated. So it's, it's, it's not something new. But like the judges said in the judgment, they had to run away from Kano for the fear of their lives. Because if the official of the state government said that they are going to kill them, then who is going to, who is going to, to, to ensure their security? They had to. Well, especially none of them is from Kano. None of them is from the northern Nigeria. So what do you expect them to do? That they to stay there? And I'm, in, in any way, I'm not aware of any law that says judgment. And it's not that the judgment was also delivered via Zoom in any way. We were in court. The judgment was delivered in court. They sat in a courtroom in Abuja, I think, or anywhere, where we sat in a courtroom in, in, in Kano. And we were connected uh, via Zoom. We announced our appearance and they took the process, they, they, they rendered the judgment. So what's, what's bad about that? Which law have they uh, contravened in doing that?
All right, and the NMPP is saying that uh, there were allegations of overvoting. I want to quote its national public, uh, its national secretary, uh, Dikbo Layoku. He says, "It is only in the governorship election they are alleging overvoting. We have to question what they mean by overvoting. Is it after totaling every vote?" Putting together APC, NMPP, and others that you still have more votes than the total number of votes accredited, those are the questions we are putting forward. Because if we are to deduct 165,063 votes because they did not carry INEC signatures, how then do you blame a party for the inadequacies of an umpire charged with the responsibilities of conducting the election? Nobody blamed them. Maybe what we are saying, because probably they were in cahoot with them because they had agents there. And our agent told us that this is what happened. And that was why we told the court that this is what happened. And we'll prove it. And we prove it. So they can now come now and, and, and attempt to be this holier-than-thou attitude, you know, saying that this was a thing that happened in the various polling unit where they had agents. And our agent, uh, the agent of APC said this, 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 and this happened. And we, we now brought all those things before the court. And when we crossed them, we realized that it was the truth. So it's, it's not a question of overvoting here. It's a question of somebody having ballot papers stuffed for him to get an advantage over uh, the APC um, based on the legal vote that, that were cast in the election. And those votes were sorted out and removed. And they had to be deducted. That's what happened. And one of their lawyers is also saying that the votes without proper stamps of signatures were tendered after the APC had closed their case, leaving the NMPP with no choice to scrutinize those voting papers through cross-examination. That is not That's, true. Uh, <laughs> That's not true. A lot of Johnson, who is also a lawyer too. In That's the not true. That's not true. The, the ballot papers were, were tendered during pre-hearing. And uh, so I think the, the judgment is available. There are some other documents, because let me tell you, you see, INEC was not cooperating with us because we, we applied for all the CTCs of the document for the election. But INEC was giving it to us in piecemeal. They give us this today, they give us this tomorrow. To the extent that at the time of the, at the closure of pre-trial, there were some documents that were, no, they were, that were not given to us. We complained to the court. And the court said, the, in all the lawyers, nobody objected. Including that of the NMPP? Yes, because the, the court had, uh, is vested with the power to vary its pretrial orders. And it says, okay, since it, the documents are with them, and they, their lawyer now made an undertaking they are going to give you, Whenever they make those documents available to you, before the closure of the case, you tender them. And when we give them, we tender them. And it's not the, the CTC of the ballot papers. The C ballot papers were tendered. Um, in fact, if we have not tendered them, how when we call the expert that they, they said that he should not give evidence, and the tribunal allowed the, uh, the expert to, who was the person who talked to those documents? They say he, can, he cannot testify. The crowd said, so no, he can testify. They went to court of appeal. Court of appeal said, no, the tribunal was right. He's supposed to testify. And he talked to those ballot papers. So how come? Is it that he talked to those ballot papers where the ballot papers were not there? They cross-examined <laughs> him on the ballot papers. Interesting uh, conversation. Yeah, the records are there. Yeah. You can, I mean, the, if the record of court is a public document. document Let's yeah. go and see the record of proceeding. We'll see that. What, uh, what oh, okay, as we try to round off this conversation very mm. quickly now, I would like to remind our viewers that we extended an invitation to the Kano State Government and, of course, uh, uh, Dr. Abdullah Bafobichi, the Secretary to the uh, Kano State Government, was meant to have been with us here virtually, but, of course, we're still here to have him. Uh, and uh, as we try to round off this conversation, I want us to talk about how people are receiving this judgment. People are saying that it's the outcome of the tribunal judgment is more political than legal. Well, As a I senior advocate know. of Nigeria, well, what do you say that? So some know. of the, the oh. faction of the NMPP is even saying that it looks like uh, Rabbi Musa Kwankwan, so the national leader of this other faction, entered into an alliance with... Uh, 
President Bola met Tunubu? Well, I don't know. I'm too small to know whether <laughs> Senator Konko saw in Senala because he was a presidential candidate like the president and they were governors together, so they are friends, they are elder statesmen. Probably, but me, I'm a small person, I don't know. What I know, uh, we, we, we approached a court tribunal of law, we presented our fact, married the fact with the law, and the tribunal gives its judgment. And uh, I was in Kano that day. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw you were yes, speaking with journalists. Yes, I was in Kano. And um, when after the judgment, I have seen how people were happy, genuinely happy. Well, some people say that uh, that happiness did not spread everywhere. And it was only restricted to the APC. And Abdullah Gandhi, well, the former it's governor, natural. who is now APC national chairman, it's natural. It's uh, natural. held his own victory party in Abuja, no, no, not even in Kano. Well, well, he's in Abuja. You don't ask because he, he too, he, may, he doesn't know the outcome of the judgment. So he's in Abuja discharging his duties. And it's natural for APC members to be happy and also the public. Mind you, the government has become unpopular because it has destroyed people's property. So those people were happy. Of course, it's natural for the supporters of the um, uh, uh, um, NNPP not to be happy. It is a natural thing. But... I'm sure when uh, the Nasu Yusuf Gauna uh, assumed duty as a governor of the state, he is going to um, uh, um, embark on the reconciliation process because definitely there is a, we need to go into reconciliation, more especially the young people. Um, politics is a um, game of uh, you, can, you have the right to hold a, um, a different opinion. But that does not mean we are no brothers. All we right. have and, uh, you're very together. confident that when it goes to appeal, uh, you'll still emerge victorious. No, by good grace, that saying. judgment <laughs> is perfect in, in the side of law. All right. And uh, uh, we are on the side of God also. <laughs> All right. Very interesting place <laughs> yes. to actually live with. Uh, so, Mr. Musa is a senior advocate of Nigeria and a lawyer to the uh, Kano State uh, chapter and of the Progressive Congress. And also a member Congress. of the APC. And also a member of the All Progressive <laughs> Congress. Okay. <laughs> An interesting <laughs> development. I must thank you so much <laughs> for joining us on the program to help us understand the legal issues. And of course, what you're saying is that the judgment was more legal than political. It rather was than never the way political. others are no, saying it, that it was more political legal. than legal. The, the judges, the, the, the judges <laughs> right. are not politicians. It All is right. purely a legal we'll judgment. Have to end it there.